Now, just when I say um, I will, I'm standing here as part of the children of reparation struggle in their three categories. There is a category of those who were born in exile. There is a category of those who grew up in exile. And there is a category who, of those who partially grew up in Namibia and partially grew up in exile. I'm also a group of um, children that were not 18 by the date of independence. So, I, I was just making some mess now, and I asked the Comrade Amtati, the president, that if a child of a planned combatant who perished, say, on the 1st of April, 1989, and the child was born almost that time, when did that child become 18 years? I think it was around 2008 or 899. The Veterans Act that deals with financial assistance to veterans and dependents, and dependents are qualified to be, and children to be people not more than eight, older than 18 years, by the time the act came into force, many of you, even if you are born in 1989, you were already 18. So you were already out of equation. You cannot be a veteran because you are a child. You cannot be a dependent because you are 18. Unless you were going to school, there I will go to the sections of the, um, of the act full time or you could not mentor you actively and um, help yourself. That generation, where is it, its place? I will talk about that. But Comrade President, I, there may be areas that will be emotional because I will say things And these views, I'm my own views. I'm not representing, I'm a member of Central Committee of our mother party. I'm a member of Polity Bureau. But I'm speaking in my capacity as a person who have in one way also been with many of you. I can see people that I attended school with in Onyango. Western Zambia. Um, I speak as a legal practitioner when I will be going to the particular provisions of the Veterans Act. So I will be very brief, but direct. Now, of course I'm humbled to having been invited and say few words about the story of NECA and its members. And as I said, NECA comprises of membership, children born in exile, those who left Namibia and grew up in exile, and those who grew up in Namibia and partially grew up in exile or way in exile. So each one has a story to tell. But the opportunity given to me to address you might yet again provoke debate on the question and status of the children of liberation struggle, I can assure you. Sadly, in some quarters of our society, the very existence of this organization is badly misunderstood. Badly. And you know what I'm talking about. The lack of proper and contextual understanding of this organization by some is unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. We know the cost for victory 
over apartheid against colonialism in this country was heavy. The cost for victory was heavy. In fact, very, very heavy. But measured in what? It's a fact. Largely measured in loss of lives. Sad story. When we say measured in cost of lives, many of you, we are talking about lives of your fathers. In Angola, in Zambia, in Namibia, almost particularly in the north, the northeastern Namibia, almost in every village, there are unmarked graves. There are instances where children of liberation struggle, who came without parents, are being told by their aunts and uncles that there was a planned combatant who was killed by South African soldiers, and there is his grave. Maybe unbeknown to this child, it may be his or her father. These are real stories. NECA, as I understand, represent around 9,000 children of liberation struggle. While of these children generally have more or less the same social, political, and historical background, we must recognize that within their numbers to this day are diverging, saddening, and yet forgotten personal circumstances both their own circumstances and their parents' circumstances. The other day, an author, Christian Williams, <coughs> published an article about Mawazo Nakadiru. I don't know how many of, them have, of you have read that story. <coughs> Mawazo demanded that uh, her name not be hidden in the article. She was a child born in 1972 near Swapo Camp, in Zambia, in Tanzania. Her father is Nicode the late Nicodemus Nakadil. After he left Tanzania leaving this child and the Tanzanian, Tanzanian mother. He went back to Tanzania in 1983. Of course, there were some difficulties. Brought this child directly to Onyango, Western Zambia, Kauma district. She started speaking the language we used to speak in those camps. Generally Oshuambo, but more Oshuambo. Coming to Namibia, the father, and his father has since passed away. By the time she was interviewed, she was languishing in acute poverty in Havana. Acute poverty in Havana. It's documented. In Nyango, a place I have fond memories of, a place I left after independence at the beginning of January. In fact, I was one of the, almost the last group to leave Nyango. There I, having come from Namibia, having grown up in Namibia, I came to know of so saddening stories particularly from children that were born in exile. And those that went to Angora, very, very young. One striking thing is, and these are real stories, 
At the time I was in Yango, there were about 4,000 kids. Many of them didn't know their mothers or fathers at all. In fact, many of them did not even know the formal names of their fathers. They knew, knew names like Gaddafi, Danger, or whatever. But they regarded Suwap as the mother, the father, and everything. When we used to come around those bundle of clothing from the, the, the Scandinavian countries, that was Swapo as the mother and the father distributing to its kids. It's because of the circumstances that these kids believed that the only mother, because of the circumstances of the organization, Swapo Party. So these kids were never simple bystanders, by the way, during the liberation struggle, as some may want to say. In a country where even those who were supporting South African soldiers are fighting to come to the podium of medals of liberation struggle, some Swapo kids survived attacks in Kasinga, in many other camps. During those convoys from uh, Kwanzaa, some call them Kuruna, is it Kuruna? <laughs> yes. Things happened to them. In Vienna, anybody, any Swapo child that was in Angora and went to another country must have been in Vienna. Didn't we go to the seaport of Luanda to offload Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe meat? On Kumono Matokoro? And many, even those clothing bundles. Didn't we assist at the logistic section in Vienna? Didn't we assist uh, at the Max Mutongorume at the garage in Vienna? Yes. Didn't we give moral, um, moral support to our combatants through singing and other things every day on the par at the parade? So we are never bystanders. A person having been abroad or not abroad, fine. But we know there are cases where it is easy in Namibia to be recognized as a veteran. Stories range from the other day I took food once to swap a combatant. But who did not do it? Some of us who grew up in a war zone in Nomtere did more than that. But because the legislative scheme brought about exclude these kids, no token of appreciation dealt with under section 37 of the Act, and I will speak about it shortly. So now, look at this. There was war, people are forgetting. We experienced it physically, emotionally, psychologically. Now, let me pose this question. I knew of a Swapo combatant, Mandela is the rose. We grew up together in the village called Toshikuru, close to Omtel. I knew a brave plant combatant who frequented in our household. Shondiri was his name. He was killed in Omtere. We knew that. He used to say he has a child in Angola. Where is this child? He was never buried. Dogs fed on him. 
He was killed with another plan combatant. We used to call him Onkurunu Unona. Ngongi Arushindo. We understood he has kids in Angola. Where are they? Who took care of them? Have they been subjected to statements such as who sent your father to Angola? At Onyoka, at Onyoka, a neighboring village, there is an unmarked, I found out a few months ago, that a combatant that was killed in a fight with South African soldiers, Kofu, his grave is in a, somebody's Mahawu field and it's unmarked. Where is this person's kids? He, of course, he cannot never be registered because the requirement is that not only that you should notionally and theoretically qualify as a veteran, but you must be registered. Now, then there is this problem. There was war, people are forgetting. We experienced it physically, emotionally, psychologically. Now, let me pose this question. Uh, I knew of a Swapo combatant, Mandela is there, no? We grew up together in a village called Toshikuru, close to Omutera. I knew a brave plan combatant who frequented in our houses. Shondiri was his name. He was killed in Nomter. We knew that. He used to say he has a child in Angola. Where is this child? He was never buried. Dogs fed on him. He was killed with another plan combatant, we used to call him Onkurunu Unona, Ngongi Arushindo. We understood he has kids in Angola. Where are they? Who took care of them? Are they being subjected to statements such as, who sent your father to Angola? At Onyoka, at Onyoka, a neighboring village, there is an unmarked, I found out a few months ago, that a combatant that was killed in a fight with South African soldiers, Kofu, his grave is in a, somebody's Mahangu field, and it's unmarked. Where is this person's kids? He, of course, he cannot never be registered because the requirement is that not only that you should notionally and theoretically qualify as a veteran, but you must be registered. Now, then there is this problem. Some of the kids left their houses, very small, but their family, after they left or when they were there in Namibia, start supporting South African soldiers. But the kid is in Angola under the care of Swapo. I will show you in the definition for you to be a dependent who can receive assistance. There are many obstacles, apart from the age limited to not more than 18 years. There, are even, there is even a bigger problem, which is, first, your parents must be, you must be a dependent of a veteran. Now, if you were a child in 1986, 88, 89, 81, or what, you left your house, probably were irritated by your parents supporting South Africa. 
Swapo took you in, come back to Namibia in 89 or 91 or 92. You can qualify because your father and mother who you left supported the South African. For you to be a child in this act, Veterans Act, a dependent who could receive assistance, but your generation have, offered, by the time the act came into force, I will show you, it was almost unhelpful to your faith. But what about a child who left his parents because they were supporting Kufut? That child is excluded because he's not a dependent of a veteran. So, the story of NECA and its member can only be understood by people who were associated with the liberation struggle. Not pretending. Yeah. How do you make a definition that a child or a dependent your benefit from the act depends on the fact that in the first place your parent must be a veteran. What about those kids? There are some, <laughs> some qualifications in the act and I will go there. It says people that were arrested, uh, captured in Kasinga or Vietnam, they qualify as, and uh, released in 1985 in Marienda. They qualify as veteran, provided that they continued supporting the liberation struggle. But if you support Boas, there is a proviso that you don't qualify. Now, those people we know, people in Vietnam and in Kazinga, we know some of them, they left their kids there when they were captured. So now, if the definition leaves out your father because when he was re uh, released, he supported the Bua and you remain in Kwanzaa, how can you be left out? So the story of kids of liberation struggle must be told by those who experienced the circumstances, those who understood their, the, this kid's pain, history and background. So I want to conclude my statement by referring to a few sections in the act. Now, it's everything in this act. There was no child of liberation struggle who would qualify as a child or a dependent beyond 2009. 2008. 2008, yes. The act came into force in 2008. Because born in 1989, by that year, you are 18. Out. Then the act made provision for projects and uh, section 37, made provision for token of appreciation. The minister must determine the amount. Why excluding all the kids, at least some, in deserving circumstances? Let me give you a personal ex example. Did anybody forget about the child that was ever in a swap camp? Did anybody ever think about kids born at the borders of Namibia and Angola by swap combatants who died? My father's brother, my uncle, Thomas Kandongora Namani, died in a fierce fight with South African in 1978 in Ombanja, borders of Namibia and Angola. By the time he died, a lady in Ombanja was expecting. Fortunately, he has before informed the family before he died, that the child, if the child is a lady, 
It's named after my mother and my great, paternal grandma, Wilka. Namanja. 1978. Child was born. After independence, because of the circumstances in the Namanja, the child, that child, came to Onyanya looking for assistance to stay. Nobody would accept it. In 1993, there is no system. There was no system to cater for the kids like this. Kandumara is in a, in fact, there is not even a grave. Who will take care of this child? And there are many. Who will take care of these children? If the child comes and demonstrates with others, I do not support these demonstrations. It's not that with the greatest respect, I think through structures, you can speak to your leaders and they are understanding and they have done a lot. My statement must not be understood to say government didn't do anything. There are dependents that have been assisted, but the procedures are cumbersome, difficult. So, therefore, all I'm saying, go read section 27, 28, understand it proper. And uh, please, those who don't understand the circumstances of these kids, of course, not everybody, maybe there were those kids, a small section, that because of circumstances they had a better life somehow, somewhere. But they remain part of this, these kids. They were part of it. So, and it's not wrong for a sector of society, a section of society to organize itself for, to add, so that the government can address it, its pride, or plight. There's nothing wrong. When the government uh, independence Children born out of wedlock were never, could never inherit their, from their fathers. The system had been changed by government. That is a special category of kids. Women were subjected to marital power. Again, government addressed it. So there was a judgment that was um, delivered by the High Court that um, cabinet decision to give kids of liberation struggle work ahead of some was unlawful. There's nothing wrong with that court order because it was not, the issue was not properly addressed. It was a cabinet decision, not a piece of legislation. It would have been easy to put those provisions in the veterans' hand then it becomes a law. So the High Court can never be, be blamed. Those who drafted the Act would have made it easy through putting in an, a special provision to amend the Public Service Act. Say, except in respect of children of uh, liberation struggle who are in the circumstances where they cannot be assisted or they have lost their parents or whatever, government may dispense with ordinary recruitment procedure. It's very easy. But you don't do it with a cabinet decision with greatest respect. It's not law. So I think with uh, our talk goes on, uh, from now and then our government does listen. A lot has been done. We are just highlighting because there is, is a particular section of this society that does not understand kids of liberation struggle. They are not kids because they are adults now, but the words used, the terms used, have a special <laughs> meaning because of the context. And uh, I thank you, the, the leadership for continuing to work hard. We have luckily 
the mother of all these kids is the ruling family. It, it is work in progress. It may be late for you guys because you are past 18 and so forth. But we, we plead for some sensitivity. We plead for some awareness. Thank you very much.